Looking to improve your game? You can now sign up for CFB Pro using the promo code LVD, get access to articles and deck guides by the world's best. Hello and welcome to another Magic Arena gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at another standard deck, and as voted on by my supporters on Patreon, we're taking a look at a Chandra's Incinerator deck. And because the deck wasn't running a ton of rares, I decided to make it even more budget friendly. I cut some of the castles and the mana base, and now I present to you Budget Burn, a mono red deck featuring only 8 rare wild cards. So Chandra's Incinerator, a new 6 mana, 6-6 six, six elemental from M21 with Trample, and it costs X less to cast, where X is the total amount of non-combat damage dealt to your opponent this turn, and whenever a source we control deals non-combat damage to an opponent, Chandra's Incinerator deals that much damage to target creature or planeswalker that player controls. So once we get the Incinerator in play, we can start pointing all our burn spells at the opponent, and at the same time we'll be dealing with their creatures and planeswalkers, and of course we get a 6-6 six, six Trample out of the deal, too, which isn't too bad. So this deck can pretty reliably play Incinerator around turn 3, turn 4 is very easy, so that's when we expect to play our Incinerator. And then we also have Torbran, Thane of Redfell as the other payoff in the deck. 4 mana for a 2-4 legendary Dwarf Noble, it says if a red source we control would deal damage to an opponent or permanent an opponent controls, it deals that much damage plus 2 instead. And Torbrand synergizes exceptionally well with the Chandra's Incinerator, because the damage doubling or the 2 additional damage that Torbrand deals starts adding up. So let's say we have our Incinerator and Torbrand in play, we point a shock at our opponent, it deals 2 more damage thanks to Torbrand, so it deals 4 damage to the opponent, and then when the Incinerator deals damage to a creature or planeswalker the opponent controls, it deals 2 additional damage, so now all of a sudden the Incinerator is dealing 6 damage to a creature or planeswalker the opponent controls after starting out with just 2 damage from shock, so the uh, damage does start adding up pretty quickly. And then taking a look at the rest of the deck, we can sort the deck by creatures and non-creatures using this handy feature. So you'll notice we have 8 one-drop creatures with Score Spitter and Spear Spearer that both deal non-combat damage to the opponent, so they're both ways of enabling the Chandra's Incinerator, discounting it by 1, and they also synergize quite well with Torbrand, dealing 2 additional damage each time. Then at 2 mana we've got the new addition of Chandra's Magmut, 2 mana for a 2 elemental dog, that we can tap to deal 1 damage to target player or planeswalker, so that it also synergizes quite well with Torbran and the Incinerator. And then 2 copies of Electrostatic Field as a 2 mana 0-4 defender, saying whenever we cast an instant or sorcery spell, the field deals 1 damage to each opponent, so another source of non-combat damage that synergizes quite well with our burn spells. And then taking a look at our burn spells, we've got the full playset of Shock, 1 mana for 2 damage at instant speed, We've got the full play set of Slaying Fire from Eldraine, 3 mana to deal 4 damage at instant speed, because we're only gonna play this using red mana. And then we've got some spectacle cards with Skewer the Critics, dealing 3 damage to any target for 1 mana if the opponent lost life this turn. And Light of the Stage, 1 mana to spectacle it, to exile the top 2 cards of our library that we can play until our next turn. And Light of the Stage is a card that in some red decks you're happy to play on turn 2. In this deck I would recommend only playing Light of the Stage starting turn 3, so that way if you exile a Torbrand you still have a chance of playing it if you hit your land drops. And same goes with Incinerator, which is much easier to cast once we have more mana available. So even though it's tempting to sometimes cast Light of the Stage on turn 2, I would recommend not doing so in this deck. And then the mana base, 22 basic mountains. If you want to make the deck a little bit less budget friendly, you could easily add a couple castles in the mana base, and you could also consider playing cards like Bonecrusher Giant, which is a nice burn spell with a powerful creature attached to it. And yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the draw. And this hand can potentially cast Incinerator on turn 3 by going Shock into Skewer into a 1-man Incinerator. So that's our game plan. Now that we drew another Shock, we can potentially play one earlier. Although keeping them until after we play Incinerator is typically better, as we'll be able to deal damage to the opponents and their creatures at the same time. Rage Hounds, sure. So I could shock that. Maybe I should. Alright, Alexorcetic Field is a great draw here. Would have been able to maybe block the Rage Hound. But uh, still very happy to have it here. Alright, so opponent's playing a red-white dog tribal deck with the watchdog and the houndmaster. Time to play incinerator here. And 
and our next burn spells will do double duty. Pack leader. But no attacks. And we're just gonna go upstairs here. And attack for six. And that's a turn four kill. Not too bad. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw. And we've got a fine hands. Spear Spear into field with light of the stage to refuel. Can even block the scorpion. And there's Chandra's Incinerator, so if we draw land next turn, we're in business. Hunt a Nightmare. Interesting. So, I can give my Electrostatic Field Death Touch. Let's see, how is this worded? So is it Chandra's Incinerator that deals the damage and not a... Uh, creature itself, so I don't think this matters too much, but... So I can Spear Spear to enable Spectacle, and then if I Shock, that's 3 damage with Fields, but then I still need to pay 2 mana for Incinerator, so I think I need to light up a stage, find a land, and then Shock will enable the Incinerator. Did not find a land, sadly, so we'll have to wait for next turn. Lurus, pretty good with Scorpion, although we can block Scorpion without killing it. And a Kaya's Ghost Form to make sure Lurus comes back right away, and then Ghost Form is a way to keep getting Lurus back. All right, we'll take four. There's a land. So I could play Incinerator now in a variety of ways. But I probably want to just play this Magma first. And just pass a turn. Village right, sacking Scorpion. That happens. So maybe I can catch the Lurus by shocking it end of turn and then untapping and killing it again before they can put the Ghost Form on it. Guild Enforcer, sure. I've got three cards in Graveyard, this needs eight total. Another Ghost Form on the Nightmare, sure. Don't expect Lurus to attack, so we'll just take four. And end of turn we'll shock Lurus. Not gonna use the Spear Spear here since we're pretty low. All right, land is great. So how do we want to sequence my turn? I need to get Incinerator out there. And then I need to kill Lurus before they can untap and play Ghost Form again. So I'm just gonna sling fire my opponent's face, play a one mana Incinerator.
deal one to Lurus. And deal one to Lurus. And we'll keep Scorch better on defense. I could attack and then take out the Enforcer. Don't think that's worth it here. Because now I can double block the Hunter Nightmare potentially. And they don't want to give Incinerator Death Touch. Call of the Death Dweller sadly gets Lurus back. Can put a Ghost Form on it. But yeah, Incinerator is going to dominate this board, and we've got Torbrand coming up next turn. So don't hate my position. And GG's. Chandra's Magmut can take out Lurus, and then Spear Spear can take it out once again. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, and we've got a fine opener. We will need to draw one of our payoffs with this light of the stage, whether it's a Torbran or a Chandra's Incinerator. Turn one, I'll probably start with a Score Spitter. Facing Hallowed Fountain, I don't expect too many blockers on turn two. And then next turn we can play Electrostatic Fields. And then turn three, maybe light up the stage to find more action. That way if we do exile the Torbrand, there's still a chance we can play it. Lofty Denial counters my field. Alright, so we need to play around four spike in this matchup. So maybe a blue-white flyer deck or maybe a blue-green splash white flash deck. Let's get in. Do we see Brazen Borrower, Bounce Spitter? That's fine. We'll just go a triple one drop. Being able to play all these one drops against the Counterspell deck is definitely pretty nice. A Griffin Airy. Alright, so there's some life gain too. Sadly, can't slam down the Storbrain, which would have been great here. But I'll settle for a. Line of the stage. Finds field and line of the stage. We'll play field. Revitalize is going to make a griffin token. Yeah, life gain means we'll have our work cut out for us as the burn deck. Opponent has two mana up, which could potentially mean another Lofty Denial. So I can start by shocking the token, so Lofty Denial doesn't work as well. So they counter that, that's fine. So now I get to line up the stage. And lands are good. And our opponent concedes. Gonna attack for four, ping the opponent for one with Spear Spear, play another Spear Spear, and if Torbran ever resolves, our opponent's in a lot of trouble. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw with a fine hand. Spear Spear into field to help us enable Incinerator on turn 3 perhaps. And a nice selection of burn spells. Facing Gutter Bones into Mire Triton. Milling over another Gutter Bones and a Midnight Reaper. So Electrostatic Field will be able to block Gutter Bones, hopefully. I don't think I'll use Spear Spear end of turn because we're behind in the race and it does deal one damage to us as well. So 
So I'll just block gutter bones. And untap. And now I can tap Spear Spear to enable Spectacle, place Cure. Play one mana Incinerator. And we'll kill this Midnight Reaper. So I could have dealt one damage to the Mire Triton and then three damage to the Midnight Reaper. But then the Midnight Reaper would have drawn the opponent an additional card. Doing it this way and just dealing four to the Reaper means next turn we can maybe kill the Mire Triton and uh, not give the opponent any additional cards. Serrated Scorpion. Gets back Gutter Bones. Alright. Do they maybe have a village rights that they want to keep up? That's what they're considering. Or maybe they have multiple one drops. Another Scorpion. Alright, so we'll start here. Kill the Mire Triton. Line of the stage. Kill the Gutter Bones. And that should pretty much wrap things up. And at six, there's a village right that we suspected, and a priest of forgotten gods, but it's too little, too late. All right, sweet. Incinerator claims another victim. On to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing an Umori deck, presumably all creatures. And yeah, we've got a pretty decent hand. Incinerator pretty good at dealing with creatures. So you should be able to play turn three. So I could kill this goose. I think I'm gonna wait and keep my burn spells until after I play Incinerator. Put on those block. Alright, so I can attack, place Cure, and then play a 2-mana Incinerator, and then still have Shock in hand. Is that a play? Think so. Opponent might be afraid of this block, but goes through with it. Alright, so we're all in on this incinerator, and hopefully we draw some more burn spells. Ooh, Shore Shark bouncing incinerator, that's painful. So it's gonna take a while to replay Incinerator, sadly. 
Yeah, it's definitely pretty soft to bounce effects. Brazen Borrower to Fairy are uh, probably the more popular ones. Sure Shark, not so much. So next turn we can activate Magmut and then play Incinerator for 5 mana. Although we kind of need to kill this Shore Shark before they keep mutating onto it, otherwise they can just keep bouncing my Incinerator. Opponent puts some more in hand. Yeah, don't really have any alternative play here. If I get to untap with Incinerator, I could use Magmut and Shock to finish off the Shore Shark. But we might see Sterix mutated here, which is going to be pretty hard to deal with. Take four. Omori into maybe a Great Horn. Nope, just a Paradise Root. Alright, do we get to untap with Incinerator? We do. That's good news. Kill this shark ASAP. And Incinerator's gonna have to play defense here. Can't really afford to attack. I'll keep Mountain in hand just to keep the opponent honest. They could have an Andreas Foreigner in hand, which. Can they cast it here? 5, 6, 7, 8? They can. And that would probably kill me. It's gonna be a gem racer instead, making a 4 4 goose. So we need to find another 2 damage burn spell to get rid of it at least. Torbran would also be a pretty good draw. And just a land, sadly. Alright, so floated out a little bit this game. Anything we can do. Don't see an out here. Can attack, double activate magmots. But that's still not enough. GG's. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with uh, fine hands. Could use an extra land or two, but we've got a lot of plays we can make in the meantime. Let's see what we're up against. Fable Passage. Gets an island. A 
lands next turn would let us double spell pretty efficiently and would set up for a pretty powerful Torbran. Blue white, no play. We'll attack. And a Brazen Borrower bounces Magmuts. Alright, so a four color deck, and there's Uro. If you're taking this deck to best of three, definitely make sure to pack some Tibalts in the sideboard for all these uh, Uro decks. Sadly, no fourth land, which would have been great here. Opponent could have Shatter the Sky, but I don't think we're beating Shatter the Sky realistically. And alright, opponent just concedes to the second Magmut. It works for me. Didn't even have to show them Torbran. On to the next one. We're on the play with a pretty decent draw. Spitter can help us enable Spectacle on turn 3. To keep the uh, train rolling here. And Fibble Thub the Lost, so maybe a Thassa enter the battlefield type deck. So we'll have to trade away Scorch Spitter, but I think that's okay here. And then this turn, probably just play Spear Spear, end of turn Shock. And then next turn, light up the stage again. More light of the stages. Electrostatic field can be a little awkward if you're holding a bunch of spectacle cards and don't have a way to initiate the uh, burn spells, but uh, Spear Spear helps there too. So next turn I'm gonna slam Torbran, so I don't really want to light the stage and be unable to play my Torbran. So I could just cure the critics here. And pass a turn. Somewhat likely that Torbran gets countered or dealt with some other way, but then we'll still have Flight of the Stage to refuel. Ah, Shatter the Sky, that's fine. So not the most impactful Torbran here, but... Opponent has to deal with it, otherwise they're dead. That's one way of dealing with it. I could sling fire, light up a stage for one mana, and if we hit another Skewer the Critics, I could just win right now. Or I can replay Torbrain, make him deal with it, and then uh, try again next turn. Yeah, let's make him deal with Torbrain first. Should have definitely played my second land first in case they're playing Quench, although not a card you see very often in blue white. So, hopefully, they have to spend their entire turn dealing with Torbrain. And then we get to maybe find another burn spell here. No, I am not making this up as I go. So I want to attack first, I can sling fire at instant speed, if I sling fire main phase they could cast a shatter, so might as well attack first and see what happens. But we might see a response, their shatter. Sadly can sling fire for 6 damage here, but uh, we'll do it now. 
And come on, skewer. Perfect. And there we go. Sweet. This is definitely a matchup where Chandra's Incinerator would not be very good, because the opponent doesn't have any creatures for us to kill with the ability, and the opponent's playing Teferi, which can bounce it pretty easily. But uh, yeah, overall, our Mono Red's budget burn deck put up some pretty good results, proving that even on a budget you can still win some games, and if you're taking this deck to best of three, you could easily add some Tibalts in the sideboard to prevent life gain, you could play Experimental Frenzy in those control matchups where Incinerator is maybe not that good, so you still have a powerful top-end card to replace Incinerator with, so you do have some flexibility in the sideboard too, but of course that's gonna potentially take up a few extra wild cards. So yeah, that's gonna do it for today's gameplay, wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.